everybody. Facebook needs to get their act together. It will not allow me to film in landscape. So, yeah, well, here we are. Whoop. But that's, that's the least of the issues. Life is too good to worry about landscape or portraits. So, it is a beautiful, absolutely beautiful sunny day here in northern Idaho. I just got back a little bit ago from an amazing walk with my dogs. It was 15 this morning. Everything was frozen. There was a layer of ice on everything. The sun was shining. It just looked absolutely amazing. So it's all perspective. These small glitches in filming or whatever we may run into are really not a big deal, right? So today's topic Hey, Miss Mona, good to see you on here. You've been heavy on my mind. So, one of the things, I ought to just share some of the things that have been going on here. It has just been beyond amazing. Um, there are some things going on right now that I can't share yet, but I will be soon. Um, they're beyond amazing also. Um, we showed the house last week and um, it was a really good showing, had a very, very amazing response and we are waiting for an offer. So that is huge and uh, the mountain boy uh, came home for the weekend, picked him up on Friday and uh, we had a fantastic weekend um, just hanging out and just spending time together, did a lot of hiking and uh, just enjoyed uh, each other's company. It was amazing. And there has been so much positive change in our lives and change, whether positive or negative, a lot of times people struggle with change. And we need to learn to roll with change and roll with the punches because a lot of the changes that we experience are divine changes. And the changes we are experiencing right now in our lives, and there are a lot of them, are absolutely incredible. And I just wanna share a little story with you on the confirmation that God has shown me that what we are walking out right now is in His will, and I am feeling extremely blessed, abundantly blessed, and feel that it is a result of our faith walk and our trust and our obedience to God even when people thought we were nuts. Good morning, Ken. Good morning, Miss Tammy. On Friday, before I picked up the mountain boy, I had to run another errand. And while I was out, I came back to our gate and um, I had to unlock it and pull through and relock the gate. And when I climbed back in the truck, a bald eagle flew out of a tree right next to me and went directly in front of my windshield. I could have counted its feathers. And it flew across the clear cut. And for those of you that know me, I'm a camera junkie. I love photos, I love videos, I love capturing those moments. My camera was sitting right there. I even looked at it and thought about it and I just enjoyed the view. It was just really, it was just amazing. I love those blessings. When I lived on the farm, I saw eagles and hearts. Those were my two things. I got to watch an eagle teach its young how to fly when I'd sit on my porch every morning when I first got there. And the mountain man has always seen eagles. And those are signs to us that, you know, life is good. God is good. God is working miracles, we're in, in his will, you know, it's, it's a very positive sign for us. And we have had so many instances of that over the last four years, over the last 10 years, but specifically over the last four. And um, Psalms 91 is one of my favorite Bible verses where um, I head all the time. Read Psalms 91 today. It's a very uh, renewing uh, chapter. And verse. The verses are just amazing. Okay, so I watched the eagle fly off. 
I put it in gear and I drive. Four bald eagles leave the tree and do the exact same thing in front of me. I did not film it. I was just totally awestruck. Totally, totally awestruck. That was just incredible. I've never seen four eagles at one time like that. And um, I don't know if I mentioned it last week or not, but I did share it on my Facebook page. The song um, Waymaker that's sung by Caleb and Kelsey is such an incredible song and it is just resonating in such an extreme way to me right now. Um, and, and so very fitting. That was on the radio. I mean, the mountain man has been listening to me scream that song at the top of my lungs. I absolutely love that song. And the mountain boy and I sang that song this weekend too and recorded it. I don't know if I'll, I'll put that one out or not. I haven't even watched it yet. Um, the Mountain Boy and I also recorded uh, a, a video that will be my podcast um, in, in the upcoming episodes. But the four eagles didn't end there. That was, that was five eagles. I drive down the lane and there's a pretty sharp curve that goes around and an eagle flew over top of me as I was hitting that curve and it flew around that curve as if it was guiding me and then went into the, into the wilderness, into the trees. And I'm, I said it out loud to myself, how amazing would it be if I see the seventh eagle? Because seven is the big number in the Bible. It has always been, I've always called it my lucky number, but after Friday, I am calling it my God number. I get down the lane to the clear cut directly across from my house and there is one massive bald eagle in the tree directly across from my home. I stopped with tears rolling down my face and took a picture and videoed that eagle taking flight. Guys, we will talk more about this at the end of this video, but there is so much truth in being faithful and trusting God and being obedient even when people think you're nuts because God will truly bless you. And don't give up through that journey because when you quit, it's right before God was gonna just explode with miracles for you. Trust me, please trust me. I am walking this out. I am seeing it, I am feeling it. I am emotionally struck by it right now. God is just doing amazing things in my family's life. And I know it is because of our faith and our trust and our obedience to him. So don't, don't ever second guess that and don't ever um, think that there's no truth in it. Please, I beg you. Now, that's just some of the miracles that are happening right now. The rest, <laughs> Tammy says shivers. Oh, I tell you, I was just, I got back here and I just started messaging people and sharing. I was just so incredibly struck by that. That really, really, that was one of the coolest things I've ever experienced next to the birth of my children and um, marrying my man. That was just incredible. That was such an absolute and such a reassurance to me that we were walking out God's will. And it was just so powerful. So, so powerful. So I'm going to go back to that. How are you guys doing today? What is God doing in your lives? What are you experiencing right now? Are you able to stay steadfast in whatever you're walking out? Are you in a weak point in your life? Share with me because we have such an amazing community and a group of prayerful people here. Um, and it's a really powerful place to share. These live videos have gotten so amazing because of the conversations and the things that have been shared here and also expanded upon. Today's topic is also making sure that you have a physical library in your home. And I cannot express that enough because um, you guys, this is really crazy too. This is another miracle. I shared last week that Tuesday night before I did my live and before we showed our house, our, our solar batteries tanked. They were no longer holding a charge. As soon as the sun was off the panels, the, the alarm was going off. 
they were totally toast. Okay, so the mountain man put in the old batteries, the batteries that were worse off than the ones that tanked. And he hooked up the house, um, the generator directly to our panel, to our house versus to our solar system. Rather than trying to charge batteries, we, we decided to hook it up to the house so that it was usable if the second set of batteries was toast also. Okay, so I have been running until six, seven o'clock at night with our battery, our bad batteries. I have, I'm, I'm on my system right now because the sun is shining. Um, we have a full week of sun. We've had sun ever since, and listen to this. We've had bits of sun. Saturday and Sunday were gray, dismal, nasty days with little spurts of sun. And I had full power all the, both of those days, which is absolutely unheard of. So that is a complete God thing also. He is carrying us. He is carrying us until we are able to replace these batteries. And I'm telling you guys, you just can't make this stuff up. God is so good. Please don't ever disregard that or think that um, he's not. It is incredible. When you pull into him and trust him and obey him, the miracles are endless. It's, and, and I've told you guys before, what you walk out in life, there's always going to be hardships. There's always going to be struggles. That's just a result of walking in a fallen world and a world that's run by a little G, Satan. You know, Unless we are calling him into our lives, we are not experiencing his goodness because society in this world has neglected him and removed him from everything. So unless you are seeking a relationship with him, you're not going to experience all the goodness that he has to offer. And it's as simple as accepting him, accepting him for what he is, something that is unseen, but absolutely amazing. So... Anyway, I will jump back. The reason I went on that little bunny trail is because at night when I am having to shut off the uh, solar and switch things over, I'm trying to be really frugal. So I'm using the fuel very minimally and I'm, I'm you know trying to utilize an hour tops, an hour here, an hour there. And in doing so, when I am unplugged, I am unable to search Google for things and I've been experiencing some weird health things and last night I had to dig out my books now granted my books did not have what I was looking for in them however I did find um, some divine um, shares in my books as well on something totally unrelated but that gave me the insight to know how to progress with what I was looking for and what I wanted to do. Books, hard copies of books are so important. I will share a link later. I didn't get a chance to look it up before I got on live, but I have um, a page on my website that is designated to um, a, a whole bunch barrage of books not only the educational books natural health medicinal books homesteading books homesteading encyclopedias but also my reading so I want to really really you know hit it home with you guys because I, I too am guilty of having a lot of books on my um, Kindle app on my iPad and my iPhone uh, because it makes it easy to read at night. That is my time when I'm able to read or when maybe I'm out in the woods or hanging in a hammock somewhere and I don't have a physical book with me. Um, but it is so extremely important to have hard copies of books, especially those that can carry us through with um, skills, knowledge, um, natural health remedies, all those things. I know, I do too. Tammy said I, act, I love actual books. I do too. I struggled so hard. It was probably, um, well, it was when I got sick that I finally um, caved to the Kindle app because I needed, I needed things to read. My body wasn't shutting down and I wasn't able to sleep. 
Um, I was using a headlamp at the time and every time the mountain man would stir, of course I look and I blind him. It just wasn't, it was, it was deadly. <laughs> and you know, it, it gave me a convenience, which I have stuck with and, and continue to read. But I struggled so greatly because as a kid, that was something that I carried with me everywhere I went. I was in trees reading books. I was at the beach reading books. I was on swings in a tree reading books. I was I was on my windowsill. We had two foot wide windowsills in this house that I grew up in, and that was one of my comfort spots. And I would I was always reading, always, always, always. And I instilled that in the mountain boy. But I can't express enough the importance of having physical books because if if we were to have an EMP and you don't have your things in a Faraday cage your iPad and your Kindle and all those things are going to be toast anyway. And if we don't have hard copies, we're going to be stuck. Those books have been what has carried our ancestors through. And, and stepping back in time is what we would be forced to do. So having those hard copies and having a good library is extremely important and not just books that you read but books that share with you how to butcher animals how to create a tincture or a salve or uh, to make soap candles uh, cheese whatever it is those books are extremely important firefox books are good um, Herbally Yours is a book that I have. Be Your Own Doctor is a book that I have, and I have several of hers. That is uh, Rachel Weaver. Um, I also have a big encyclopedia. I'm going to get this one. Because I have not shared this one with you guys yet, but I think it's important. This is an incredible book. Um, I have a question. Can you guys see this? Is this like legible? I flipped something on my phone last week and it's supposed to make things legible to you but illegible to me and I think it, yeah, it's backwards to me so it should be right for you. Natural Remedies, Encyclopedia, and this book is just loaded. As big as it is, it still didn't have in it what I was looking for last night but it is a huge resource that you should really have at your fingertips. Some of these books are not cheap, um, but it's an investment into your future. So just my thoughts on that, I really wanted to hit home on that because I can't express it enough. I go to my hard copy books a lot, and especially right now when I'm, um, I'm writing different articles and I'm writing different books, and I'm also seeking my own knowledge for my own health. You know, to not have resources at our fingertips is silly. And, you know, as I'm cleaning out my house and downsizing, one of the things that I really haven't touched much is my books. There have been some that were more reading books than knowledge books, but my knowledge books, no way. Those are our keepers and I just want to encourage you guys if you don't have that in your home now to consider making sure that you do because it's just one of those things to fall back on it does take up space right now all of my books with the exception of maybe a box full are out in my shed um, I kept my most um, important books accessible and soon I'll be packing up everything so I want to make sure that I know where these most accessible most important books are you know so being organized if you are going to do things that way all my boxes are labeled so I know what books are in what box so I don't have to kill myself trying to find them so being organized in that fashion is really important too so that was one of the important things I wanted to share with you guys today how many of you have really good libraries I I, I know many of you do um, there's all kinds of resources. Uh, the other thing you can do is uh, create binders and print out how-tos that you find or that you utilize, recipes that you utilize. I have done that in the past. I have one started, but I started using Evernote and I know that's on my app, but I can also print out Evernote as well. So stashing everything in there and then printing it out and putting it in a binder is really smart. Um, 
but seeking knowledge, storing knowledge, having access to knowledge when it may not be available is going to be a really important aspect in our future. We have become so used to having knowledge at our fingertips that we forget how we used to have to find things, you know, through encyclopedias, the library, you know, we are in an age where things are, I mean, the access to knowledge right now is awesome. As long as you're able to discern good knowledge from bad knowledge or to choose and discern uh, good resources versus bad resources because there are bad resources out there. Um, you know, the joke is if you find it on the internet, it's true, but we all know that that is false. So, and if you don't, please know that it is false because there is a lot of bad information out there. So learning to find good resources is also important, but these, some of these books I have are old and out of print. Um, actually, I have like three or four of them um, that are completely out of print, but are some of the most amazing resources. And you can still find them, but it costs a pretty penny. The thing that you can do too is go to your thrift stores and your uh, secondhand shops and the Goodwill. They've got great book libraries there and a lot of times you can find some really amazing resources there. I found quite a few there. So knowing how to find them in a cheap fashion is really important. On Amazon, if you go onto Amazon, a lot of the used books are really inexpensive and are a great way to stock up your library. I have no problem getting a used book and that is what I have been seeking to fill my library. So keep those things in mind. Now, I couldn't help but turn today's topic into the importance of faith, trust, and obedience. You guys have seen us walking this out for the last four years. You know, um, we could have easily filed bankruptcy, uh, but we felt extremely led by God to not, and that that was not the path we were supposed to take. So we've taken the tougher road and we've been, you know, really, it has been a hard walk. It has been a very, very hard walk. Um, but I want to encourage you guys, if you are having financial struggles, to not only, um, you know, seek God in it, but there is a person by the name of Bob Proctor. It's, um, you can go to bobproctor.com. And the book I am reading right now, and I have actually been following him for years. His materials are incredible. Um, but this is a really um, eye-opening book. And it is also a book that will... Um, really add a positive light to your circumstances. And that's important because it's very easy for us to get caught up in the struggles and the hard times and um, to not see the light at the end of the tunnel. Huh. It is, the book is not on my iPad. It is on my iPhone. Huh. All right. So I can't even tell you the name of the book. But when you go on to bobproctor.com, actually, let me do that real quick and I'll tell you the name of the book. Um, you can actually get this book for free. That's how much he feels it is important for people and the masses to read it. And it is. It is really phenomenal. And it, his is the, it's Proctor Gallagher Institute. So if you end up there and are questioning why you're there, you're at the right place. But if you type in Bob Proctor, it's P-R-O-C-T-O-R.com. I will send a link um, into the comments later. He's actually doing a, um, how the law of attraction really works right now. So you can also sign up for that. But, um, Oh, nuts. He doesn't have the link for his book right now. Hang on. Let me see if I can find it. All right. I'll provide the link for that later because right now he is promoting his um, 
his webinar that he has. So that's something you should sign up for. He is very, he's a very good speaker and he has uh, very good information. You know, I've talked to you guys before about the um, effects that we have on ourselves when it comes to our thoughts. You know, when we have negative thoughts, we are projecting negative things into our life. The more we focus on the negative, the more we are pulling that negative into our world. That is why I am such a positive person, and that's why if I get into a positive place, I am human. I do get there sometimes, but I don't stay there long. I, I really pay attention to my thoughts. I pay attention to the things I say to myself. I pay attention to what I surround myself with. And when I find that any of that is affecting me or that it is not in line with how I want to be living my life, I very quickly redirect it. Sometimes that requires asking friends for prayer. Sometimes that requires me pulling into God and really delving into his word um, or just uh, having, commu you know, communing with him and fellowshipping with him. But it's really important that we pay attention to those things. And that is how you can build on your trust and your faith and your obedience. And, you know, listening to that still small voice sometimes puts us in places that other people won't understand. You know, I have experienced and been around some very strong Christian people that feel that God would never put us in the position that we are in but I disagree I disagree because God may want to trust our uh, test our obedience he may want to use a circumstance to grow us he may use that circumstance not to grow us but to grow people that are watching us so I do believe that God allows us he doesn't put us in these places but he allows us to walk through these places of financial struggle, of divorce, of, of job loss, of all kinds of, of illness, all these different things so that he can use us for his glory and so that he has an opportunity to shine through the miracles that happen in our lives. And I'm a true believer in that. Um, you know, he doesn't allow these, he doesn't create these things but he allows us to walk through them as he walks through them with us. There, the things that we go through that are hard and that are um, struggles, he, he always shines through, always. He always brings good from the ashes. So I wanna give you some words of encouragement today because this one really resonated with me this morning. The reality of God is what it's called. The Lord opened the servant's eyes and he saw chariots of fire all around Elijah. That's from 2 Kings 6, 17. And um, the reading that you can go to if you'd like to read it is 2 Kings 6, 8 through 17. And it says that in C.S. Lewis's The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, all of Narnia is thrilled when the mighty lion Aslan reappears after a long absence. Their joy turns to sorrow, however, when Aslan concedes to a demand made by the evil white witch. Faced with Aslan's apparent defeat, the Narnians experience his power when he emits an ear-splitting roar that causes the witch to flee in terror. Although all seems to have been lost, Aslan ultimately proves to be greater than the villainous witch. Like Aslan's followers in Lewis's allegory, Elijah's servant despaired when he got up one morning to see himself and Elijah surrounded by an enemy army. Oh no, my lord, what shall we do? He exclaimed. The prophet's response was calm. Don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more... Sorry, I cut off there. Hang on a second. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah then prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. So the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Although things at first seemed bleak to the servant's eye, 
God's power ultimately proved greater than the enemy horde. Our difficult circumstances may lead us to believe all is lost, but God desires to open our eyes and reveal that he is greater. Guys, this is so true. How many of you can relate to that, that when you're walking through something that's really difficult, you know, it really has heavy weights that weigh on your shoulders and just leaves you in this bleak, in this place of despair. But I want to I wanna just keep hitting this home today, too, that through faith and trust and obedience, God will change your heart and open your eyes in such an amazing way. I would be lying if I said I have not felt the weights and have not been discouraged. I've, I've, I shouldn't say discouraged. I've been weary and worn out. But one thing that has never occurred through these four years is my lack of faith and trust in him or questioning why. I've overcome that and it's not, a, it's not, a, it's not bad when you question why. Sometimes it's a good thing to question why because then you get answers. But I haven't had to do that over these last four years because my faith walk had become so strong that I just trusted the outcome. I trusted what he was taking us through. And after one time of the mountain man and I not obeying, we felt like we were supposed to do something and through counsel with others, we were encouraged to do something else because they felt God would never ask that of us. And that was a very big eye opener for us because we learned a great lesson because when we went out of God's will and we walked down the wrong path, God made it very evident to us that we did because we both felt very strongly that we were supposed to do things different. But we, we followed, we chose not to follow our own leading and our own, that gut instinct. That gut instinct is the Holy Spirit leading us. And we have learned from that point on that when we are being led and we know we are being led by God, that we do not go against that regardless what people, including those closest to us, think. Because there is so much power in following and walking out his will, no matter what it looks like. Another book I want to encourage you guys to delve into. I was blessed. Good morning, Chad. I was blessed to... Um, have this book shared with me and because it was shared with me through audible and i wasn't a member of audible i was able to get the book for free so i'm able to listen to it and listen to it and listen to it and it is such an encouraging encouraging book it is uh chase the lion by mark batterson and you can find it by going to treyerwilderness.com slash chasing the lion it is such an empowering empowering book on not giving up and on living our lives to the fullest. Hey Amber, glad to have you joining. So it's it's really important that we as we're walking this out in order to have such strong faith tr and trust and to be able to be obedient, we need to seek him we need to listen to things and read things that encourage us and encourage our spirit and, and, and um, speak to us. And I love doing that. I love, and I love when people share things with me because I feel those are divine implants into my life. Those are things that cross my desk, that cross my email, that cross my messaging of people sharing things with me that I have to, that, that I was meant to come across. And I can't tell you of anything that I've, that's ever come to me that way that has not served me well. And that book, Chase the Lion, is just such an encouragement. Um, let me see if I can find the verse. Um, I was listening to it this morning as part of my uh, devotions and, um, along with what I just read to you. And they kind of go hand in hand, you know, um, being courageous in our lives and being willing to step out when people around us aren't willing to or 
don't understand or don't see what we see, it shouldn't keep us from doing so. And there's so many powerful things um, in the Bible to encourage us in just reading the Bible. But um, Mark Batterson's book brings reference to 2 Samuel 23, verse 20. It's all based on this one verse. And this is the verse that, that took him to the heights in his life and enabled him to uh, live a life that he wants to live despite other people questioning it. And it is, there was also Benaiah, son of, I'm going to butcher this one, Jaediah, a valiant warrior from Kebzeel. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two champions of Moab. Another time on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed it. In his mind, he views that verse as one of the most um, heroic verses in the Bible. And it really um, empowered him. And his book, like I said, is based on that. But his book is so, so encouraging and so empowering. And it's, it's, it's a really good read and a really good book to listen to. So if you haven't gone to Audible um, and, and you don't have um, an account there and you would like one, um, private message me today and I would be happy to share this book with you so that you can go there and link up to it and get it for free. Um, it's a book that the mountain man listened to twice so far and I know if we started it again he would listen to it all the way through it's just really something that um, takes you to a different place it empowers you to to be bigger than your circumstances bigger than what you're walking out and and just an encouragement to really um, not be afraid to live life and embrace your dreams the worst thing that we can any of us can do is to get to the end of our life and sit there should have would have could have I refuse to do that and if my walk mean in order for me to embrace my dreams if that means that I've got to walk a hard walk to get to where I need to be then so be it and that's and you know living the life that we live we have walked out many of those times but I would never in a million years change anything even these last four years, they have been so incredibly hard, but there's been so much growth and so much gain through it and so much power in seeing what God has done through us and for us. And what you guys are going to see in these upcoming months is going to knock your socks off. I'm telling you, if things go the way they look like they are going to go with our home, you guys are going to just sit there in awe and shake your head. God is just doing miraculous things. Now I want to share something else with you. This actually came to my inbox right before I went live. Linda is one of our um, audience members and she has been asking us to pray for Greg and his family. I had shared that with you that he has cancer and was really struggling and um, he had young children and uh, was just such a an amazing Christian man and a very good friend of hers. And I didn't know the depth of his struggles. And today she shared this with me, and I think this just kind of falls into what I'm saying with you guys. You know, the key thing is is that we've got to keep focusing faithfully forward. That is why this year's live videos are pound sign faithfully forward plain and simple because we can't look back we need to look forward and we need to focus forward and we need to have faith and trust and be obedient those things are going to take us to such incredibly rich places of abundance in so many ways we can't quit we just can't that's not an option and any Anybody who quits is quitting probably right before the intense miracles take place. Oh, so many good things have come from perseverance. So just stay in that place. Keep pushing forward one step at a time. If you are going through a hard time right now, 
just one step at a time. Now listen to this. This is uh, Greg's wife that wrote this. And she writes this in capital letters, the, this first two sentences. Celebrate every success, big and small. Gratitude is transformative. Okay, so she says, picking up our story where I left off in the last post, Greg and I have always been a team. We are both questioners and problem solvers. Neither of us were going to sit by idly waiting for the next move. I am a licensed and registered occupational therapist, but haven't worked in the field for eight years. I can see though how so many of my life experiences, including being an OT, were meant to prepare me for this journey with Greg. Who else gets chills from that? So over the next several days in the hospital, when Greg had something he wanted to say, I would sit with him until he figured it out. Sometimes it took us 20 minutes to get there, but we both persisted unless he was frustrated and then we would just come back to it later. Once he could walk with just one person assisting and a walker, we took to the halls and walked lap upon lap. I helped him relearn how to eat with his right hand and we started working on visual awareness and attentiveness to his right side, both impacted by his right-sided vision loss and his decreased sensation on the entire right side. We celebrated first me shaving him and then him doing it and real seated showers. Each and every time he or we had success, we celebrated. My prayers were full of gratitude. We also laughed a lot. Greg doesn't remember a lot about those early days, but I do. I'm so immensely grateful I could be by his side and assist with his recovery. He has a brain tumor, so it has put pressure and, and debilitated his right side. And now to you, my friend, who is working so hard to heal your chronic illness, or my friend who is in the midst of something really difficult, in capital letters she writes, do not focus on the distance ahead of you, focus on the right now. Give thanks for each and every success, big and small. Break out your gratitude journal and deeply feel the gratitude as you celebrate and give thanks. Now, Linda says, Tammy, this is the latest update just posted. I also contacted Greg's wife and he is home now and is having radiation chemo and chemo. Please continue to pray. Thank you so much, my special friend. We've been praying for him for a couple weeks now. Um, when she first messaged me, it was looking really, really grim. There is so much power in prayer, but that relationship that comes with that and the comfort and trust and faith you have and knowing that when you pray, God is going to answer. And the thing you've got to understand, guys, is he doesn't answer in our time. He answers in his own time. You know, I've been praying the same prayer for four years. I didn't stop. And I didn't doubt that he was going to answer it. I just knew that he was going to answer it in his way and in his time. Regard And that... That may be overwhelming for some of you to think that you could be walking something out for four years, but the thing is, I don't view these four years as hard and awful. They were a struggle, but I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing the growth and the miracles and the amazing things that have happened during our walk of these four years. I'm here to tell you, I'm able to have a conversation with you. Four years ago, I couldn't even have a conversation. Four years ago, I couldn't sit like this for more than 10 minutes. And then I was in extreme pain. I couldn't, I couldn't lift a frying pan, a skillet. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Now, I am on a routine right now to rebuild my strength. I am back on the weight bench. I am back doing push-ups and sit-ups and riding my bike and walking and hiking and gearing up to build my new house in spring. We've got to be able to put our trust in something. And, you know, a lot of us are seeking things in society and in the world to give us that feeling of completeness and joy and happiness, and we're not finding it, right? You know, the Mountain Boy is a perfect example. He was seeking, you know, comfort in video games and movies, and he wasn't getting it. It took coming home and singing his heart out and regrouping and refocusing himself. You know, and, and that's what we all have to do. We all have to realize what we are doing, how we are thinking, 
what we are focusing on and what we are willing into our lives. You know, if you are sitting there and you are focusing on the hardship of and what you are walking out or the illness that is debilitating you right now, you're going to continue to be in that place. You've got to look past it and visualize what you want in your life. I am visualizing my house and what it's going to look like. And I don't have to visualize the view. Every day when I go for a walk, I see my view. This morning I videotaped it. It's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. Every day, regardless if the sun is shining, whether there's ice on, on all the trees, it's an amazing view. And it is a choice for me to wake up and see gloomy gray weather or to see the next day and what it's gonna bring. You know, that's what we were walking out for a couple weeks was the gray gloomy stuff. Now I am being like so solar powered and rejuvenated and renewed with this amazing weather, but I have web clients and work to do, so I'm having to do it from here and getting my sunshine through the window. You know, we, we have to be able to um, want things bad enough in our lives that we continue to seek them and, and visualize them and will them to happen in our lives and not give up. The thing is, guys, you know, we could quit and live the simple, bland life that maybe we're living right now or we could choose to live that greater life that we're all hungry for or desire. And it's just a choice. It's a choice of one day just stepping over that line, that fear, that comfort zone. You know, Amber, I saw Amber Bradshaw join me. Amber is one who did something very similar that, as, as we did. They, they moved from a comfortable place to the wilderness and built their, their own off-grid homestead. And they went through struggles. We had a month of rain and mud up to our eyeballs. We would take our pants off at night and they would stand themselves because they were so packed with mud. And I know Amber went through the same thing in that regard. She built the top of a mountain and to get up the mountain required four-wheel drive. The four-wheel drive wouldn't, you know, would get them there just barely on a dry day. So then you add, monsoon rains to it you know but they they stayed steadfast and they fought the weather and they fought mother nature and they fought the struggles they went through just like we did but I'm sure and I know for fact just because of the kind of person Amber is that she is living her dream and very thankful and grateful for all that she went through even though it was hard because she's now living out a something that she dreamt of and and walking out that reality and I know many of you are doing the same thing many of you have dreams to um, move to different locations to um, have a full life and and God in it uh, Terry and June who uh, Terry has been joining regularly Terry moved to New York to be closer to June so that she could help him with his cancer treatments and he is still praying hard and trusting God greatly that he and June are able to um, rekindle their marriage and, and progress forward. So, you know, don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your prayers either. Good morning, Miss Shelley. I am so glad you are joining. I've been praying for you. Shelley could use some extra prayers. Um, and we need to pray for her daughter, Sarah. And... Um, and keep praying for her daughter Sarah and that is one of those prayers that we can't give up on and and know that God will in his time turn things around um, and pray for Shelly for great strength um, but guys we have so much more power in our day-to-day -day and in our lives to make things a reality based on how we think how we talk how we function, what we uh, bring into our lives, what we surround ourselves with, and that includes who we surround ourselves with, and dependent on how much we seek God. God is truly there to bless us, and <laughs> that is awesome. Sarah, 
know we are praying for you. And, and I am really glad that you are joining in today. Good. Tammy said, so glad you made it. Shelly Passmore. Shelly, you have walked out some pretty tremendous things with your health and healing too. And God has surely had his hand on you there. And um, I'd like to ask you guys to pray um, some extra prayers for Chad. He could use some, some strength and, and uh, uh, just mainly strength. Just build him up and lift him up. I'm glad you made it too, Shelly. I'm really glad you made it. And, and I hope you gained something from the earlier parts of it. I mentioned a book that would be really good uh, for you and Sarah to listen to uh, called uh, Chase the Lion. And uh, I just, I hope that you guys gained something from this today. You know, I shared earlier with you, <laughs> you can count on our prayer, Sarah, and we would love to have you join us every week. Um, we've got a really awesome community of really awesome people that love on one another and are there for one another and help each other through our struggles and our hard times. And we all need that. We all need encouragement and, and good people surrounding us. And you're very lucky to have your mom. Your mom is an amazing woman. And, and her heart is there to help you. So just know she loves you. And know that she, she has asked us to pray for you because she loves you. So pretty awesome stuff. So guys, you know... I, I shared with you earlier what happened with the eagles on my lane. You know, for many of you, you haven't even seen a bald eagle in your life. And if you have, you've seen one. To see seven in, in the matter of 10 minutes was a very clear sign for me to know that through our faith and our trust and our obedience that he is going to bless our socks off. And I really truly feel that every day is another blessing. Every day there are more miracles happening and more amazing things occurring here for us. And like I said, there are things happening right now that I can't share with you, but I will as soon as I can. And, and when I do, I'm going to refer back to today and that story with the Eagles because it pertains to that too. And, and you'll see the connection. It's really just amazing. And you know, you've, you've heard Greg's wife's story, and it says, do not focus on the distance ahead of you, focus on the right now, and, and give thanks for each and every success, big and small. Break out your gratitude journal, and deeply feel that gratitude as you celebrate and give thanks. You guys have heard me so many times share the importance of being true and seeking those blessings, even if it's something so small as seeing a heart shaped, a heart shape in a, in a mud puddle. Whatever it is, those things that you focus on, when you focus on the good in your life, more good will come to you. And the more good that comes to you, the more empowered you are and the more grateful you are and the more changed you are because you become a powerful person. You become somebody that is, is focusing on the good instead of the negative. Shelly says she says it is real and she is a believer. Awesome. I'm really glad to hear that, Sarah. And, and know that God is um, really going to, to strengthen you. And know that he is right beside you no matter what it is you are walking out, Sarah. No matter what it is. No matter where you are. And you know, we all hit low places. And no matter how low we are, sometimes God isn't right next to us. Sometimes God is carrying us because we don't have the strength ourselves to do it. But the more we pull into God, the more we read his word, the more, the deeper we go and the more of a relationship we seek with him, the greater he can help us and the greater he will bless us. Kenny Dean says, found it rarely sit long enough. Oh, I'm really glad you, you joined in and I'm glad, I'm glad you're here. You have some pretty insightful things to share, uh, Kenny, and I'm always glad to have you um, watching and, and commenting. So I'm glad you're here today. So guys, like I said, I hope that this was helpful. I can't encourage it enough. You know, my faith is one of the strongest things in my life. And I used to not share it so boldly 
But once I got sick and saw what God was doing in my life, I realized that I couldn't sit on it anymore and that I couldn't keep it quiet and I had to remove the basket over the light. And next week, I think we're going to talk about that as well. And, and that is how we can be a light to others. We all have a story. And as we progress in healing from different things and, and from uh, walking away from addictions and divorces and the hard in life, we have a story to share because we all are growing and we are all changing. And, and, God, and the more we allow change, we talked about that in the beginning, the more we allow change in our life, the more we allow for growth positive growth and and that's why we got to seek the gratitude in our lives and and the good in our lives and to seek him and to seek him regularly when I do not have when my life gets really crazy and I'm on the road and I don't have the opportunity to seek him the way I normally do every morning my day starts with God and when I go a day or two where I'm not able to do that like I normally would, I feel so jaded and disconnected. And, you know, he, he, is, he is my father. He is my papa. And, and he is somebody I can go to um, and, and not be concerned about how he feels about me, how he judges me, because he's always loving me. And that's important. That's something that we need to realize is that he is the one person that's going to love us regardless what we walk out. And he is the one that's going to help us change where we need to change. So my advice to you is to, if you don't have a relationship with God, to form one. And it's as simple as just accepting him, accepting him into your life and reading his word on a regular basis and communicating with him. A lot of people feel that when it comes to being prayerful, you have to pray, the, pray these stern prayers and these, you know, um, regimented, the same prayer over and over again. But really, a relationship with God is talking to Him no different than I'm talking to you. And I walk through my house and through my day doing that all day long. It's just a fellowship and it's an awesome thing. And it's really awesome when you can see the miracles and the blessings and His hand in your life. And what's really awesome is for me to share what's happening to me that you guys can see it because the seven eagles is is just miraculous it's just incredible so I just want to encourage you to form that relationship and to keep that relationship and to create a routine that makes it a regular relationship because without him in our lives we're truly nothing we really are um, he, he created us to commune. He created us to fellowship. He also created us to be a disciple, which means sharing our story. And I think, like I said, next week we're going to talk about that. So, Sarah, I hope you will join us next week because love to have you. Um, love to hear how God is working in your life, too. And I'm really glad that you guys were able to jump on here at the end. That's really, really awesome. And um, I'm just going to say a prayer for us and, and let us... Uh, Get on with our days and hopefully they will be good and amazing and you will be seeking the gratitude in them. I want to share what Kenny said first. I start every day with giving thanks for the simple things and continue that through my day. God keeps me busy with so many blessings. Amen. Amen. And thank you for sharing that. And that's just it. I, I couldn't start my day any other way. It's really so important to me. It's such a routine, just like writing in my journal. You know... And the other thing is, sometimes, some, some days, my days are really jam-packed and very busy. And some people may look at that and say, you know what, it's so busy, I don't have time for God. And I used to do that. I really did. I used to do that. But I've become so devoted that I, I just, I, I give that time to God every morning. Um, sometimes a half hour majority of the time an hour and then like Kenny I go into my day and my day is filled with him anyway but by starting my day that way and asking him how to spend my day and asking him to direct my day that it best benefits him but also that I'm able to be productive and get my things done no matter how busy it was and no matter how much I shouldn't have given up that hour I still get everything done I'm still as productive 
and my day goes much greater because I'm focused, I'm centered, and I'm seeking Him. So remember that when, when you feel like you're too busy to give Him time, um, there's no such thing. All our time comes from Him. And when we seek Him for our time, He'll, he'll make it all happen. He'll make it all happen. Trust me. Just trust me. And Kenny, thanks for sharing that. And thanks for joining. It's always nice to have new people on here and new insight. And, and like I said, we have such an amazing community. I'm so grateful for that. You guys are amazing. Um, I give God all the glory because what I say on these live videos is are his words. I'm just this vessel. I really believe that. Um, I get on here sometimes and five minutes before is when I know what I'm supposed to talk about. So... Anyway, I'm going to say a prayer and send you guys on your way. Papa, I just thank you so much for this beautiful and amazing day. Thank you for another day. Thank you for blessing us with new guests. Thank you that Sarah and Shelly were able to join us today. And Lord, I just ask you to wrap your loving arms around Sarah and just give her the strength to overcome her struggles that she's walking out and to just be with her and Help her to see the amazing people that are surrounding her, that are there to help her. And may she continue to join us weekly that we can be a light to her and, and a place where she finds um, community and, and uh, peace. And Lord, I just ask that you do the same for everyone else that's joining us. Give them the strength and courage they need to work, walk out whatever it is they are walking. May I be a light to them with our faith and our trust and our obedience to you. And may it be contagious. And may they learn to find a routine in fellowshipping with you that gives them the peace and the joy and the happiness that they've been seeking in life, but they've been seeking it in the wrong places. And I just ask that you give everybody strength and courage and perseverance to not quit in whatever it is that they're walking out, that they learn to take small steps and keep their focus small and, and celebrate their accomplishments, celebrate their achievements, and to know that they come from you. I ask that you be with the mountain boy and just give him strength and courage in the element that he spends his time with day to day. May he be um, comforted and given peace that is beyond his measure and just help him to accomplish his goals there at Job Corps and just uh, be with Chad and Terry and, and June and be with Greg and his family as they are miraculously walking out this uh, brain cancer that he has and uh, just continue to help them see you and seek you and, and see the miracles in their lives and be a light to others as they obviously are. And I just ask that you be with all those on our prayer list in the description below and just help them and, and be with them and guide them and just help everyone to be a light and be willing to share their story with others and, and help others to see your goodness and your benefits. And Lord, I just thank you for the amazing miracles you are working in our lives. I thank you for selling my home and finding us the perfect person to live here and be a neighbor. And I just thank you for the vision you've given us for our new home and what you're going to do as we walk this out. And I just ask all of this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being a part of our community. And um, may you have an amazing week till we do this again next week. And for those of you that are new and joining, I do this every week at 1030 Pacific Standard Time every Wednesday. So have a fantastic day. Seek the miracles, seek the blessings, and seek Him. And uh, just continue to be faithful and trust and be obedient. I love you all and look forward to seeing you next week. God bless.